started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Hi friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so happy that you're back with us today. We have Isabel Rodriguez with us today and I'm so excited for you guys to meet her and get a feel for her. Isabel, welcome to the Make Life Fun podcast. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I'm Isabel Rodriguez. I used to be Isabel Anderson before I got married. I come from Sweden in a little town called Tirsa outside Stockholm. I'm actually living in Costa Rica right now. I just became a mom seven months ago. So it's been a very, very long journey, I feel like. Everybody's like, the time flew by. And I'm like, no. <laughs> it, it's not flying by. I'm trying to figure everything out, but it's been a lovely journey. I'm telling you that much, but I'm a confidence coach and well, transformational mindset and confidence coach. And I do most of my retreats here in Costa Rica for women. So basically women who are in business that needs to heal. So it's all about the mind, body, and finances. So it's also about stepping in and transforming your business life, your personal life, and connecting with like-minded women because we always in being an entrepreneur we know that it's about the network who we know actually not specifically what we know of course it's important but who we know so i wanted to create a safe place for women to come and create not only create but heal and take their personal life and their business life to the next level so i always combine with different experts from around the world to come teach at this retreat so I found myself like very lonely in the middle of COVID. Me and my husband, we were actually doing master my retreats, millionaires master my retreats for men and women. And when we finally did our first one, I could see that a lot of women were like holding back. They were not telling their story. They were not emotional available, I would say. And I just thought to myself, okay, I need to do this just for women. I need to have a safe place for women to come together. So that's that was my first like wake up call, what I really wanted to do for women here in Costa Rica. But then COVID happened. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this more than ever because now we're in lockdown. Everybody's like shut down in and mental health is just like we have to do something. And I created the Mastering the Feminine Power Mastermind Retreat in the middle of COVID. And our first one was actually 2020 in May. We had incredible speakers coming. We had Ashley Black, Forbes Riley, just to name a few. And it became super successive. And now because of that, we are still in the middle of everything that's going on in this world. But it became so successful that a lot of people in, in America were like, I would love to come to one of the retreats, but I am not ready to leave the country. So I was like, what's my next step? I'm taking the retreat to the States. So we're doing it in Florida in July. So oh, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so that's that's basically what, what I'm doing. But to actually tell you what I'm doing right now, I need to actually tell you about my my, my past, if I may, in my, I'm going to shorten it down a little bit, but I come from a, a past of abuse. I was sexually abused at the age of five and abused by my stepfather when I was 11 to 15, very vulnerable age. And I also lost my real father in a car crash when I was one year and two months old. So I had a lot of tra traumatic events go happening to me growing up what happened was the consequences of those traumas like I, instead of talking about my emotions and dealing with what i've been through i turned to alcohol and drugs and i also developed an eating disorder and at the age of 19 years old i found myself in the hospital after having first the psychosis but also waking up from uh, my third suicidal attempt and i was 19 years old and the doctor was just looking at me and be like isabel what are you doing I had my first real wake up call there because I was like, okay, if I'm 19 years old and I am at the rock bottom, how good can my life actually be if I actually put in effort 
because I hadn't at this point. I was just like in a victimhood, just like trying to run all the time, finding love in the craziest places where I shouldn't have been. So my journey started there. I started to, okay, I need to figure out why I'm acting this way, why I'm feeling this way. Why can I not be happy? So I started to study. I started to read books. I went to seminars, courses. I got my first coach. You know, I traveled the world. I've been to 50, 57 countries still counting. And because I went traveling, I met my husband there in Zambia in Africa while traveling all by myself with a backpack, like on a mission to tr find myself at 23 years old, right? And there he was, he's from Uruguay, I'm from Sweden, we're meeting in, in Africa, crazy times. And he helped me so much to not only believe in love, but loving myself. And it sounds so cliche, but in the first like two, three years, I pushed him away. I don't even know how he could stay beside me, to be honest, because it was, I pushed him away. I was like, I'm going to leave him before he leaves me, you know, like he's going to, you know, do me wrong. And I, you know, all these crazy, crazy stuff and just putting up walls. Right. But it was not until I actually started to appreciate myself, loving myself, like this is who I am, but I don't have to stay this way. It's not like I have to change for him or for anybody else, but for me to become better, to be my highest potential. And that's what I was like looking for, like why I've traveled the world, like trying to find myself, but actually stepping into that power of, hey, this is me. I can learn this and just being open to say yes. So that's why I got into coaching because I wanted to give back because I did all of the work myself saw what worked, what didn't work. And of course, it's not like a model for each person or everything works for, for everyone. But I put all of my work and what have worked for me into my program, which is called Rebuilding Your Lives. So it's all about the mind, body, and finances to help women who have been through traumatic events. That's also why the Mastermind Retreat actually was created because I've realized a lot. I haven't met one woman who haven't unfortunately experienced either sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or abuse of overall and that is a trend that's coming when i talk to women who have been in my coaching programs it's the same thing over and over again and just breaking that trauma generation or whatever it's called but yeah so basically that's where i'm coming from but in the meeting i need to just say one more thing i got the opportunity to actually tell my story in a documentary movie so they i had a team following me around for five years this was from when I was 18 years old up to 23, but right before I traveled the world. And they wanted to highlight the consequences of growing up being abused, basically, and the relationship between the mother and the daughter. And it took a long years, like many, many years for me and my mom to actually find back to a relationship that actually worked for us after what we've been through. This documentary movie got so big in Sweden and it won the Kristallin Award, which is kind of like an Oscar. That's how it also opened up a lot of doors for me because when I started to talk about my story, a lot of people reached out. And they were like, I can relate to your story. I feel less alone. And that's where I was like, I, this is my mission. I can use my story to empower other people to do actually the same or at least rise from their story and not just identify themselves with that story forever and be stuck there. You know what I mean? So that actually helped me to get into the coaching place as well. But not only that, I also started to see how much you can move with your story. So I got in contact with the politicians of my country and I talked where, where in the society was lacking for women and children in needs and, and what can we do better. So we actually managed to change a law. It took us 10 years to change a law in Sweden to protect children in need. That created like a huge like domino thing for me. I was like, hey, I need to get out there, I need to share my story, and I need to empower other women because we are so powerful. And when we stick together, magical things happen. Long story. No, beautiful. Wow, I was <laughs> getting chills as you were speaking because it's so crazy how we have found each other because your story, like of traveling and trying to find yourself, but knowing that no matter where you are, you're with yourself. Your story yeah. of being abused and go and saying yeses instead of saying no and not having any boundaries. Like, oh my gosh, like you said, so many women, including myself, same thing. And from that trauma to building yourself up and then now giving back as a mission, it's just huge. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I just see so many potential out there. You know, a lot of people that the only thing that's holding them back is themselves. You know, that limited beliefs that we have about ourselves. I'm not good enough where everybody else can stay. What if I fail? You know, the fear. And I just want to like kick that to the curb and be like, hey girl, I got you. Let's just do this together. Let's do this, hold hands. And like you said, we're so much more powerful when we are together. Like we're not meant to be like alone. Exactly. And that's what I thought, or that's what I felt like the, the whole time. Like when I met my husband, I was very that like, no, 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 I'm going to be alone forever. I'm not never going to get married. I'm not going to have kids. I'm not going to do that. You know, very pushy away from, you know, me, like don't come here. But then I realized, you know what? I've been doing everything all by myself for such a long time and forcing everybody else around me to just kick them out. And that makes me lonely. Even if I have even if you have a good relationship to yourself, just kicking everything and thinking that everything is there to hurt you is never going to build anything. You know, empires are not built by one person. It's built by so many. And that, that's what it is. We, don't, we, don't, we are not supposed to be alone. I love what you're saying right now about when we are hurt, we are so, our tendency is to like push everybody else away. I mean, that's what I did to Austin for two years too, two to three years. I just kept pushing it. And I even asked myself to this day, like, how did I get so lucky to find a man who pushed back? Like who kept coming back? Yeah. Pushed him away. Cause so many people did not like the people that I pushed away, they just were like, okay, then bye. And so yeah. I think that's a tendency with trauma that when you are hurt, you just don't think you are worthy of having that love. And I think a lot of women, a lot of moms that are listening right now could relate to that independence, that fierceness, independence, even in motherhood, yeah. like not asking for support because you're like, well, I could do it by myself. I could do it by myself. Yeah. And also like seeing everybody else doing everything by themselves, you know, like social media is very, it's very masked. I think, do you understand what I'm saying with masks? Like it's, it's just, everybody put it on a happy face and that's, you know, this is life. Like I'm doing it, all of these things. I'm really like honest about like how I'm struggling at times, like from the outside, I don't want everybody to look into my profile or, or my, my social media and be like, her life is perfect. It is not. I have my problems. I'm struggling. I'm sitting there crying, feeling like, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> you know, the biggest fear is like, am I getting my child the trauma? Like, <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that, right? Yeah. And like, yeah. So I'm like, ask for help. I'm I'm like always like ask for help, especially with my husband. I, I tell him all the time, like, you have to help me right now. Could you please? I need a, 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 an hour alone. I need to go to the gym. Like, I need still, and I don't think it's selfish to put your needs before someone else's because in the end of the day, the household, depending on the, both mom and dad, but mo mainly on the mother, the mother is nurturing the baby, I'm breastfeeding, you know, putting the food on the table and I'm having my, my work, right? So if I'm not happy with myself, nobody else is going to be happy because the energy is not going to flow. <laughs> Exactly. 100%. The energy is not going to flow. And that's a big one. That word selfish was always such a big trigger word for me. When people would say like wanting to go travel by yourself is selfish, wanting to, you know what I'm saying? That that yeah. is selfish. Though That was such a trigger because it was like, I'm taking time for me and you're calling me selfish. So maybe then I shouldn't be doing that. But it's the opposite. It's like fill your cup so full that you have so much to give. And it's like with ease. Yeah. I mean, we all have a relationship to ourselves. I mean, in every area of our lives, we have to have a relationship to ourselves because that's the person that we're going to walk beside, like walk within to the day that we die. You know, everybody else can come and go, but if we don't have a good relationship to ourselves and fill that cup, as you said, how are we going to be able to help somebody else? It's just going to be halfway done. You know, we're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to put a half the face on, but I feel like shit. And everybody can feel that energy, right? Yes, 100%. 100%. I would love for you to speak to the moms that with your story, how you have been able to impact so many and how you've been able to use your voice to make a change. I wouldn't say hard, but I didn't understand how big it was going to be. You know, first you have a camera team with you and you're like, okay, yeah, just follow me around. And then when the movie actually came out, you know, I got to 
be on movie theaters. I got to be on radio stations, TV shows, and, and just talking. And I didn't understand what an impact it was actually going to have. I was just telling my story and from my point of view, basically. But it opened up so many doors and got me in contact with the most beautiful people mm-hmm. and got to help in so many ways that I thought, you know, it's just a story. Everybody has a story. Everybody been through trauma. And yeah, we all have, we all have a beautiful, unique story, but also by sharing certain stuff that's not out there for everybody to see, you are opening up other, for other people to heal, to understand that they're not alone, that whatever they've been through is not shameful. It's not their fault. You know, all of the guilt and all of the guilt trips and everything, they understand I'm not alone in this situation somebody else has gone through this and made it on the other side it gives me hope they can learn from that or at least get a little bit inspiration of you know somebody i talked to some a woman the other day and she said to me she was in a domestic violence relationship and because she listened to a woman on youtube just sharing her story she left that man the same day just because of that so whatever you have because sometimes we think that everybody thinks like us or knows all of the things that we don't that we do but they don't and by sharing just the smallest little thing you can change somebody's life in a minute and and give somebody else hope and that's what it's all about like sharing helping being out there for other people we're not here on this earth for us basically how empty would our life be if we were just living for us and making us self happy then we will find ourselves with all these billion billion dollars in our bank and we will feel like so unfulfilled what am i doing here why am i even here why why am i spending money and it's about giving to somebody else to help somebody to actually go to bed and feel like i made a change today you know i saw somebody else happy that's what I, why i do what i do you know go on coaching like go into group coaching or one on one coaching and i see the person on the other side changing mm-hmm. their lives right changing and, and transforming in front of me and they're having these aha moments and they're sitting there thank you and i'm like no <laughs> you did this you would just ask the right questions to realize and opening up things in yourself because we have all of the answers mm-hmm. inside of us we have all of the answers inside of us but we have so many blockages that's keeping us from becoming that true potential and knowing all those things that we have inside. That's 100%. And I just love that you said that we all have the answers, but when we're in this box and when we can only see that limitless in that box, like it's so hard to peel back and get to that true potential. So getting somebody to ask you those questions to move those mountains basically is what they are in front of you that you can finally like see like who you truly are so huge and then using your voice to serve is the biggest thing if you're using your voice to serve and you're giving somebody else hope then that's i mean that's what gives life meaning that's what you're saying what gives life that fulfillment piece and even just a little part of your story can like give somebody hope like you like that big change for somebody to leave an abusive relationship because they heard somebody's story that is so powerful. It's so powerful. And that's, that's also what a lot of people, when we get together at the mastermind, because of the main thing with the mastermind is also that we all sit together every night and we highlight a woman for 30 minutes. And then mm. she gets to talk about one specific problem or many problems, right? And we all sit around and come up with all these solutions. And by talking about our story, talking about this problem and opening it up and knowing that it is a safe place and other people can relate and understand and have solutions, we become so much more of ourselves. We get rid of those blockages that's holding us down from, you know, playing small, basically, because that's what we're taught in school, you know, do this, follow everyone, get out there, find your job, find a house, pay for that car, and that's it, you know? We are not taught about this in school, about how how to shift our mindset. We're just taught that, okay, you're depressed, go to a psychologist, get more pills, instead of actually healing from the roots, healing the root cause of that problem, right? Because it's possible. It's possible. And that's huge. The healing piece is so huge. It's such a ripple effect. 
it yeah. shows in every area of your life. Absolutely. And also it, it affects so many people around you. It's like a little drip in the water. When you start to heal, everyone around starts to heal. I, I just remember like three years ago when I really started to change and heal myself my mom she was like i, I want to know what, what, what do you do like she became curious now my mom is on my group coaching call that i have every sunday she's there she wants to learn and she's she's amazing everyone around you when you start to change starts to change as well and start to feel like okay i can actually have something more in life maybe i can go for my dreams you know she's so fearless and i, I really don't like the word fearless because i believe that nobody's fearless yeah. we all have our fears we are we having fear to protect ourselves right but doing it regardless mm -hmm. doing it regardless the doubt okay. the anxiety the fear whatever doing it regardless is what gets you to the next level 100 percent. and that drip in the water like when i started to heal myself i used to say always it's the other person's problem the other person's problem like if you would do this if you would change my life would be better my life would be better but wow what a night and day thing it happened when i decided to go full in on my healing journey my world shifted my husband quit drinking he went on his home healing journey and he's gonna be a year sober tomorrow wow like, congratulations wow amazing me and my mom's relationship have never been better like my it's just like the craziest thing happens right before your eyes yeah when you decide to start to heal and it is and i know people hear healing and they think it's so scary. It's so like what's on the other side. And that fear part is the part that keeps you stuck to where you are today. But if I could just like on my heart right now to say, like, if you start that healing journey, you are healing so much more than just yourself. Your whole yes. world changes. Absolutely. And I also believe that you go, you, you go on another vibration, like mm -hmm. an other frequency. Yes. And for everyone, you know, believing in manifestation or not, I mean, it's happening anyway, but you attract these positive things. And also by just saying, yes, yes, I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to, you know, two opportunities and not just turning them down because of fear, because usually that's what happens. Man, it's everything unfolds. Like it's insane what, what things comes into your life when you actually start that journey, right? It's insane. It blows me away. The It's like magic happens before your eyes. Yes, you're crying. Yes, you're shedding these tears. Yes, you're shedding these layers. But at the end of that is such a bright light. It's such a, oh my gosh, it's like life giving. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. And the ripple effect. I can't believe that's amazing that your husband stopped, stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, when he stops drinking, I will. When he stops doing this, I will. I'll that, do this, this. And that was the problem. We did that yeah, first. that's the problem. We're waiting on everybody else, but we cannot change other people. No matter how much we want that, we cannot change everybody else. You know, but we can change from within what's going on and how we're going to respond to everything around. Because it's easy for people to say, "Yeah, but I'm I'm not happy here because my coworkers are this and that, or this and this and this happens." Yeah, but you cannot control that. So, so what what can you do? Mm -hmm. Well, I can change how I respond to it, mm -hmm. how I get stuck in the negativity about it, how I talk about it, you know, how I think about it. That's what you can control. Yeah. That is up to your power. Yeah. Right? Yep. Started with making a list of my values and what do I value about myself? What do I want myself to look like? What do I want my world to look like? And then it invited him to level up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, it, it's about seeing also sitting down and doing that work with yourself. Like what is my strength? Mm -hmm. What is my weaknesses? And not just to focus on the weaknesses, but acknowledge them. Okay, they're there. But how can I get my strengths to be more powerful and actually focusing on what you're doing great to make it even more better, right? Yeah. Because that, that was the thing too and in, in how I attracted my husband. Because when I decided that I wanted to change, I actually took a look at, but who do I need to be to attract the right people into my life? Because I am not on that level right now. So how can I become that person that is on that level? So I can start manifesting these people that I want in my life, right? It's all about that too. Like take a look at yourself, but it's easy to look at everybody else because everybody has their faults, right? 
And when we start being honest with ourselves, okay, but this is what I do. Maybe I am the trigger here for some reason, you know, like, and what, how, what can I do with that? It's powerful when you start looking into yourself and being aware, mm-hmm. being aware of yourself and everything that's going around in your life and how you can take responsibility for that. Oh, so big. This topic is so needed and it is so timely too, to be talking about the healing journey. And I know, again, it comes back to that fear piece that people are just so afraid. So if you were speaking to that mom right now, Isabel, that is listening, what would you say to her to kind of get into her soul a little bit about this healing journey? Because we're telling them like, it's so good. Like there's so much that is waiting for you. And but what is that one little thing? I know you probably have it on your heart to, to yeah to say about about the fear. Fear is gonna be there anyway. You know, time is gonna it's gonna slip right in front of your eyes anyway. So why not doing it, feeling good, and leaving that baggage? Because it's also a security to hold on to that baggage, to hold on to that victim mentality. Because it's something that we've been living through for for a long time, and it's it's a security. But do it if if not for yourself, but do it for your child. They will not listen to what we say, but they will module what we do. So whatever is going around that child, especially now when they're like up to five years old, it's like a clay. You can form them into anything. You can teach them anything because they don't have a conscious mind yet they only have a subconscious mind so basically whatever you put into that child there they're going to have forever so make sure that when you do that be the fullest potential that you can be i mean i know it's hard don't get me wrong we're not trying to be perfectionists here but when you heal they will see that too and they will be a part of that and they will look up to that forever and they are always going to be thankful that you decided i'm going to heal no matter what it takes for me I'm leaving that baggage. I'm going to be my full potential. And fear will come. But then surround yourself. Listen to this type of podcast. Surround yourself with those people. Go to the mom lane, for instance, the clubhouse. I love that. It's so much out there today that, that you know, when we fall back, because I have my moments too. I wake up and I'll be like, okay, I'm not feeling it today. Like, what can I do? I go and I move my body. That's the first thing I need to do in the morning. I move my body. Shift that physical activity that do so much for your mind. Make sure that you take time for yourself. I know moms are like, I'm going to fix it all by myself. I'm going to make the food. I'm going to look good. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to, no, girl, like take time for yourself. Like take time for yourself. I would, I would say that, you know, like before anybody else and, and ask for help, ask for help and say, you know what? I can do it on my own, but I'm choosing not to because I have to fill my cup. I love myself (laughs) yeah because I love myself like (laughs) take time for yourself yes you're going to be an amazing mom even if you take one or two hours two three four times five even seven times a week if you do it every single day that's good take Mm -hmm. that time for yourself I think it's super important love on yourself you're doing so much can you imagine how much we do as women Mm -hmm. as a mother right? Taking care, nurturing a child and also nurturing ourselves, mm-hmm. especially if you're breastfeeding, like you're, you're actually producing food for another human as you're keeping yourself alive. Like be good on yourself. Make sure you eat good, healthy, amazing food, you know, and ask your, if you have a spouse or a family member or whatever, because I know I'm, I'm in Costa Rica. I only have my husband here. I wish my family was closer, but, and his family is not here either. So for us, it's like, it's him and I or a nanny. Make sure that you get that good nanny, get a good connection. So you two also can work on your relationship, right? And that's a big piece too that happens when you become a mom is you are now full attack, full on with your child. And I started to find myself at the beginning was ever, ever, ever. And I started seeing if I didn't catch on to my husband, it was gonna be, it was gonna be work to bring it back. So yeah. That piece that you're speaking on, you have to find time to work on your relationship too. Yeah. And finding yourself as new, like a new couple, not, not a new couple, but as a finding yourself as a, as a new team, mm-hmm. basically, because it's going to be different. It's going to be different. You have a child now, right? But finding that fun in the everyday life together, 
Can you maybe start doing something that you didn't do together before, maybe cooking together, even though he might not like it, but please spend some more time together, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it can be, finding these ways to connect, I would say, and have some time at least once a week together because it will it will be hard. I have a son, he's seven months old. I, I, I said to my husband a lot of times, like, you have to take time for ourselves. I miss you. Like, I really miss you, you know? And it's super, super important. Yeah, so I'm glad that you brought that topic up because that is a super important, even though we want to be the best mom that we can be, it goes back to filling up your cup. It goes back mm-hmm. to taking care of you and loving on yourself and knowing what you need, giving yourself that permission to to ask for it. Yeah, so big. yeah, and especially also like as a couple, I, I do believe that your your child is going to you know grow up and, and see you too. And that's what they're going to associate with love. So if you have a great ground to stand on as a couple and do the work together, because he doesn't have a, a clue of what's going on in your mind and you have no clue what's going on in his mind. And as a team, like, what are you doing together as new parents? Just finding that out together because we don't have like a, a paper with, a, <laughs> with all the, the answers, right? Just going along, I'm like I have no idea what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll look at my husband and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Do you know? And he's like, No. Okay, great. High five. Let's do the best of it. Exactly. Always making <laughs> it a game, right? Just <laughs> turning it into this game of like, we're gonna do the best we can, and we're gonna allow yeah. that to be enough. Yeah. We're gonna lead with love, and we're gonna allow that to be enough. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It just allow that to be enough. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Yes, because yeah, that has been the biggest shift changer for our for us raised being new parents and raising our son is that if we lead in love, all of it is is gonna turn out okay. <laughs> yeah. And also allowing, like we don't have all the answers. So mistakes will happen, things will happen, and you you go as you go, you know, and just not being too hard on yourself. Like in the beginning, I really felt like I really felt like I had to be the girl I was before I I became pregnant. Like, you know, going up early in the morning, always hitting the gym, having the perfect dinner ready, doing three hours of morning, my morning routine, showing up on all these social media platforms, doing podcasts, doing webinars, doing all these things. And then when I had a baby the first three months, because he was sleeping all the time, I could manage to almost do it all. But when he hit the fourth month, something shifted. He didn't sleep alone in his bed anymore. He was stuck to my boob all night. I was crying most days. And I was like, I cannot show up for my people like this. I'm losing myself. I don't even want to go to the gym. I'm depressed. And I'm finding myself like bashing on myself. Like, I can't do it anymore. What's going on? Everybody else do it. No, they don't. No. You just see everything is perfect on social media, but everybody asks for help or everybody has help or, you know, outsourcing what I can't do all by myself. And the first thing I was doing, we're having a cleaner. We're outsourcing that part. I'm not going to do that anymore because I don't have time, you know, and being in agreement in a relationship. What am I supposed to do now? Because I'm working, I'm cooking, I'm doing all of these things. How can we lay this out? What are we outsourcing? Sometimes it's so much more greater to actually spend some money on things that you don't want to do. So you can actually do the things that you need to do and finding that out as a couple agreeing on that thinking okay how can i help you in this situation because my husband in the beginning is like what's going on here everything switched and i'm like yeah yeah it all switched i don't feel it anymore i don't i feel like i lost myself he's like but what what do you mean with loss no but i cannot do the things that i did before i had a baby and it's like but you're a mom now you're not supposed to compare yourself to who you were before because now you're a mom and whatever you can't do right now okay what's the worst thing that could happen and i'm like yeah okay i'm putting the standards too much high and then i started to you know do the little small to-do list every day before going to bed make sure i do something for my business having time for the baby and then taking time off for myself like going to the gym. Sometimes I bring you to the gym because I love having a round and playing, but make a little schedule for yourself. See what you can do and ask for those, for those around you to help you on those days when, you know, you can't do it all. That's, that's what I would say. Yeah. I love that you're saying like outsource 
Like that's something that we didn't see our parents do. So yeah. when we don't see, we don't, it wasn't modeled for us. So then we're thinking, how, how are we going to do it? But I love that you're speaking to it. You're saying, do it. The things that, yeah. that you can spend the money on, if you have money, spend it on the things that you don't like to do anyway, so mm. that you get some time back so that yeah. you can spend it with your child. So that you can spend it going to the gym and cooking that dinner. If you enjoy cooking that dinner, like all the things that you like to do, you have more time for that. Yes, like outsource as much as you can. I would say just do it. I mean, if you you're a working mom, like a mom and mompreneur, you you will find it out sooner or later that you know having a team, having somebody who can do run the things behind the scenes, so you can be the light of doing what you're supposed to do, and then you have the time with your baby, and then you have a cleaner, so you don't have to do that thing at least, right? Yeah. Or you can have a cook three times a week, whatever it can be to make it easier. Or if you have a husband who cooks, I mean, that's awesome. But order the food, hold your, your, your door. You don't have to spend that time. Outsource as much of those things that you do not like to do. And of course, if you can you know, pay for it or not, but focus on the things that you do best, that you can put the most energy and time into that will get you the best results and not losing your mind to do it all now. I love that you said that you're going to learn it anyway, because <laughs> that's yeah. what happened to me is I, I was doing it all and doing it all. And then he became, like you said, four or five months and he's running around now, crawling around now. And it's like, it doesn't work the same. No, <laughs> no. And I, you know, and I found myself like, what's going on? I'm losing my mind. And I said to my husband, I am postpartum depression. What's going on here? But it was because I put everything on my shoulder. I did everything. And at the end of the day, I'm like, what did I, but what did I do today? What, what, what was what was what what, you, what is my meaning right now <laughs> you know I felt myself asking and then I was like okay well I haven't really taken time for myself or to do what I what I really want to do also I mean of course I want to create this amazing life for my for my son but then if, if, at the end of the day if I'm going to sit there I'm like I don't even know who I am anymore <laughs> you know it's 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 time needed for for us yeah it's time needed. And I love that we're speaking on it because sometimes as a mom, you need it modeled for you. You need somebody yeah. else who's a mom to say it. It's okay. It's okay. And so <laughs> let's yeah. Now, yes. And also at the beginning, I was ashamed. That was like, I, I have no one to talk to. I don't want to go live and talk about, you know, how I'm losing myself. And I'm like, I, I kind of miss how life was before. And it's okay to feel like that sometimes. It's okay to miss that part of yourself. It's okay. I mean, you're you're completely transformed into a mother. You know, your whole life is upside down. You don't have the time you have with your husband anymore. Like those car rides. I, we used to laugh. We used to always be in the car because we, we lived on the beach side and we had to go to the city for my controls for the baby. And we were always dancing in the front of the car. We were stopping to eat food. We had a lot of fun. Now I'm in the back of the car taking care of the baby. And we're like laughing like, yeah, remember those times? It was just you and I. And that is exactly it. It's a complete transformation. It's my, one of my really good friends at the beginning when I was losing myself a little bit and having that moment of like, what is going on? She says, it's like a death. It's like you birthed the baby and it's like, yeah, the old you died when that baby came into this world. Oh, I couldn't have said it better. I feel, I said that to my husband. I feel like a part of me is dead. Yeah. That's it. Like, I don't feel like myself anymore. And it's like, you're going to find it out. And I'm like, it's easy for you to say. Exactly. But the moment she said that to me, it shifted something for yeah. me. Because I was so craving that, that old Josie. I was craving that fearless, like, have the fear do it anyway was my motto. Like, I was craving that girl. But she's like, yeah. Josie, you're no longer that girl. Yes, you have pieces of you, of her. But you are this, like, new goddess birth giving mom like yeah. she just spoke so much life into me and yeah. and that's the reason like the, with this podcast is I want to speak so much life to the moms and know that you are not alone right yeah like, I love that I alone. absolutely love that because I because it doesn't come with a manual nobody tells you okay you might feel like this you might get stuck here how do you even plan your days and especially mm -hmm. as a mompreneur that was a huge thing for me. Like, how can I get, I looked at my husband and I'm like, I, I don't get anything done. 
like anything. I might have a meeting, but he's breastfeeding while I'm having the meeting. And then I go to the next meeting and then I'm supposed to put out, you know, a story or go live. And I'm like, I have no time, no time. So structure it up and ask for help those hours where you need to sit down and actually do in, do some work. Because what I found myself was I was trying to do it all. So early in the morning, working halfway, just always halfway because I was taking care of the baby. Okay, shh. And then at the end of the day, I felt like I was not with the baby. I was not with the work. I got nothing done. It was just halfway. So instead, like, take, yes, yes. So take two hours of doing exactly what you need to do and then four hours with your baby and then one hour for yourself and that's it whatever you need to outsource there in between do what you must do but do it focus on different tasks so you don't go to bed and feel like i just didn't do anything yes oh my gosh so true that autopilot that robot that you're just moving through the day and at the end of the day you're just like i know i did a bunch of stuff but i feel like i wasn't there like there was yeah. Really home. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes just on out of pilot. Yeah. I felt like, what did I do today? What did I teach him today? <laughs> Nothing. But that's what I felt a lot in the beginning. I was, but I didn't I didn't even read him a book today because I really didn't have time. I was just like cooking, having him on the arm and then trying to have a meeting. And I'm like, I don't even know what I did. You know, it was just like every day just passing by. And then I woke up and I'm like, I need to have some structures. Now I've kind of find my piece. And this is what works for me because I'm a, I'm a morning morning owl, if you say so. I go to bed super early, 9, 10, I'm, I crash. But I go up at 6 and he doesn't wake up to 8. So that leaves me at least, you know, two, two and a half hours for just myself. And I do my a little bit of meditation. I do a little bit of yoga. I do my morning's emails. Take the dogs out have my morning coffee, read my affirmations and stuff like that, right? And then he wakes up, we all eat together and then it's work time because that is his first nap. And then I do some work in between. And then when he wakes up, it's playtime. The second time I go to the gym, you know, I, I found the ways now really how to do things. So I, I feel like structuring everything a little bit up and also like find his schedule. So in between his naps, you can have some time for yourself. Yeah. Do what you need to do. Right. That one is huge. I was never a scheduled person. I was like a go with the flow, whatever may be, will be. <laughs> but the moment you become a mom, that flow, I, cry, I tried so oh, hard. I, I tried so hard to keep that flow, but it is 100% correct. The moment yeah. I started having that structure of wake up earlier, have my me time and the, yeah. the work and being dedicated to it. So much work gets done. You can do so much in even 20 minutes when yes. you just like focus on what you're supposed to be working on. And so yeah. that structure piece is so huge. That one was hard for me. Like it's yeah. it's 11 months and I just started it about two, three weeks ago. I'm not oh, lie. but no, but it, it takes time. I mean, it's 11 months. It takes time to find that and it's okay. You don't have to have it all figured out. And what I realized for me, it wasn't one of the things I found myself every time he was asleep had his nap, I was cooking. So the only thing I got done was cooking. And I was like, at the end of the day, I only cooked, I only cleaned, I only did this. And he, when he was asleep, I didn't get any time for myself. So now I only cook when he's awake. So when he can be beside me playing and I'm cooking and we make it a fun thing. So I don't only cook yes. when he's asleep. Yes. Then it's me time. I need me time when he's asleep yes. for work time. I love that. And I love that you said me time is like movement, meditation, yeah. affirmations. It's like filling up your cup again. Yeah. Like yeah. Filling super yourself important. Up. Super important. Super important. And just take, you know, every day is a learning process. Mm -hmm. It's a, everything is a learning process. We're only getting better. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't have it all figured out. We're going to make mistakes. And it's also a big, huge part of, of forgiving yourself. Like be nice on yourself. Forgive yourself. It's okay. Okay. I didn't do it great here. It's okay. I will, I will do it better next time. Yeah. It's a learning and we're so taught to like be the perfectionist, be this perfect mom, be that TV mom, that mm. Instagram mom that you see, but we're here to tell you we all are learning. We're all growing. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like Johnny right now because I was <laughs> sorry. No, but it's, it, and it, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I, right before this, I came from the gym. I just put it to, to bed and I put makeup on right before this. And I'm like, I'm getting ready. <laughs> Doing that. Filling your cup. It's the new mom life. Mm -hmm. And just figuring out as we go and asking for help. I mm -hmm. think that that's the main thing. Just say, go on live. I don't know. Just go live on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. I need help right now. I'm breaking the part right now. I'm like, I'm having a moment. And I promise, I promise that people will be like, girl, you know, contact me right now. I'll go through the same. It's just that we don't talk about it. We it's don't show we don't it out there. About it. Yeah. And that is the whole inspiration with this Make Life Fun podcast. I am on the process of creating this beautiful membership for mamas to have this safe space, to raise yes. their hands and be like, hey, I am having this moment. I'm having, and we can yeah. pour the love. We can fill the cup because sometimes it's hard to fill the cup yourself. You need others yes. to do it for you. And Absolutely. So the same that. thing, you have to ask for help, but you have to have that safe space. And that's what, that's what's getting birthed as we speak <laughs> yeah yeah and get advice also from the people who have already done it you know mm -hmm. they're like one year ahead of you or mm -hmm. you know whatever it can be but i'm also thinking now when you're talking about it we need a retreat for this yes we oh need a gosh. mom retreat yes a mom retreat and the thing is moms will be like i can't like my husband i because i used to travel a lot before having kids and i told my husband like i want to go and have like a weekend he's like what what are you gonna do? What am I gonna do without you here? Like, there's no way that you could go away for a weekend. So that's gonna be a whole thing of shifting minds of dads yeah. to know that they can keep, they're capable of keeping their children alive. We have to have a dad retreat and a mom retreat, teaching the dad that they can do it themselves and the mom so they can go away and get pampered. I'm thinking like pedicure, manicure, massages, and then learning. Mm -hmm. learning how to structure things up, not to do's, what to do's, and experiences. Mm -hmm. like talking about the experience. Yes. That's what changes things. That's what changes things. It just gave me goose pimples because that's what changes things. You yes. have to have that experience. You have to get it in your bones and you have to learn and yeah. implement. And oh, it's so good. And I yeah. see it too. As you were speaking, I was like, yes, pamper me and teach me. Yeah. Sched to schedule to have this life because that's what makes life fun exactly that's what makes life fun that is what makes li like life fun and finding new mom friends as well i'm thinking that this could be a thing this oh, could be thing. something we can do it. together and everybody's watching right now i want you to if if they can write somewhere or maybe on comments and stuff what would you like to do at yeah. the what do you need what do you need to get away what, what would you want to learn about because i mean it, i haven't heard about any mom's retreats per se but that is something that can be invented and we all can come in together and be like okay i, I need this i want a little piece of that because it's for them it's for us it's yeah. for every mom out there yeah. we need that we need that 100 percent. we need that it takes a village but we don't have this village yes yeah no exactly exactly back in the day we used to have that it was a village raising kids. Now it's two people in a household, basically, mm -hmm. raising one kid. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't have all the answers. And that's why we need to reach out to our villages. We need to find our people. Yeah, 100%. Since the moment I started this podcast, I was like, I need a soul family. It needs to be a soul connection. And it needs to be moms that are wanting to have more fun in motherhood. And the only way to have more fun in motherhood is to heal to yeah. fill your cup so full that you're just brimming over. You could do the long nights. You could be tired. You could show yeah. up and put a little makeup on and yawn and be okay. It's still yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's just- And fun. still have fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, oh, okay. Everything doesn't have to be 100%, like 100% perfect the, the, whole, the whole way. No, mm -hmm. it's never gonna happen. Just enjoy the moment a little bit here and there. And, and what I found myself, it's, it's one of, of the techniques that I use is breathing. Mm -hmm. Actually breathing and ground myself. Sometimes when I go out with the dogs, I just take my shoes off and I ground myself and I breathe. Mm -hmm. And I realize, okay, I'm here right now. Because sometimes what I realize that a lot of moms do, we have this list in our head. Did I do that? I need to do that. I need to shut that. I need to buy that. I need to fix that. I need to make that call. And that keeps us away from everything, from being 
present mm -hmm. because we're constantly moving towards what do I need to do what's next? the next thing what's the next thing? yeah the next thing and I love that you're speaking to getting grounded and breathing that is so huge it's we talk about this a lot on make life fun that grounding that breathing and it's such an easy tool that people don't use it because it seems too too easy yeah just like one breath just focusing yeah. on just one yeah just am I breathing with my stomach or just my lungs right now <sighs> Just moving that stomach because also what we women do all the time is holding our stomach in. Mm. We've been taught like that since we're yeah. babies. So we're like, oh, I don't even breathe anymore because I have to, <laughs> because I'm inside a baby. I'm like, let it out. <laughs> let it out and breathe. Just let it out. <sighs> oh my God, that is so true. We are yeah. taught, like right now, as you said, that my stomach is tight as yeah. I am right now. And yeah. Just, it's like, it feels so good <laughs> to let it out. And just connect with your breathing and be like, I'm going to be present. One thing, it's okay to lose it. It's okay to just cry. <laughs> just let it out. Just put your baby in a safe place and go cry. Mm -hmm. Just take a deep breath and you go in and be like, Whoa. there's a lot of times I needed to do that mm -hmm. throughout the pregnancy. Like, and then after the pregnancy, I was home alone. My husband was on the road and, you know, he was crying, crying, crying. And I was like, I need to breathe. Mm. I need to breathe. And okay. I put him in this bed and I just went out, just took five breaths. And then I'm like, I'm going to go in. And I hugged him and I was like, I'm back. Mm. Oh, such a good message. Mm. Because it's so true that we hold it in, we hold it in. And then what happens when we hold it in is that explosion later. Yes. So giving yourself that permission to cry it out. And yeah. that cry is so cathartic. It's yeah. so it's like you release it and then all of a sudden yeah. you feel like okay yeah so when i started to when i when i started to explode <laughs> because now these days i'm just letting it out mm -hmm. I, I cry a little bit here cry a little bit here. i don't want to explode anymore but in the beginning i was keeping everything tied together nobody can see that i'm fucking losing it you know so i'm gonna explode and then i learned okay i'm gonna explode i'm gonna go in i'm gonna go into the room and i was hitting pillows just getting it out there, just screaming the pillows sometimes, whatever you need to do to just release. It's okay. We have to release whatever you releasing it. Just don't do it on people. Don't yeah. release or scream at other people. Just going by yourself in the room, hitting pillows, squeezing the pillows. And the... Yep. It's and now... really time to go take a nap. <laughs> oh, and now Everett and I are screaming into the pillow. He loves it. He loves it. And I said, oh my gosh, I've taught him such a good thing since an early yeah. on. Like he just yeah. kind of like now let out this little scream and it's I'm just like, oh yes, let it out. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah, because it's so important to just release because when we hold tight on these emotions, they just get stuck in our body and that's mm -hmm. why we have pain. Mm -hmm. We have to release emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're angry, sometimes we're sad, sometimes we're super happy. Just show it off and just get it out there. Yeah. I say there's gold in our emotions. Our emotions are here to teach us something. If we yeah. just learn, if we'll acknowledge them, they literally will just go. But we're so taught to hold on to that, to not show it, to not even name it, to pretend. Yeah. And it's the same, like when we teach our children, it's super important to teach them that feelings are real like it's it's okay to express yourself mm -hmm. and we sit down with our emotions what's going on here why are you, why are you feeling like this put a word to it it's okay it's okay it's okay to be stupid it's okay to scream it's okay to be mad what is going on right now like being aware mm -hmm. and teaching our children that too because it's not good to hold it in yeah, None it's of not us. good. It's not good to hold it in. I've heard so many people say to their kids when they're crying, "Why are you crying? Stop crying! Stop crying!" Yeah. No, just like no, please, no. Yeah, it's super important to let them know that it's a safe place, that it's okay. Of course, they, they needs to be consequences if we're hitting stuff, breaking stuff when we're mad. But then we sit down and we hold hands and we say, "What's going on here?" We breathe together and we try to put a word on it. What's going on inside of you? What is happening? And I, I think that a lot of grown-ups don't know what to do with their emotions. And that's why they're they're mirroring that on their on their children. And it's super important to acknowledge and being aware of what's going on and expressing. Yeah. Super important. Yeah, but it starts with us, it starts with you, and it starts with that awareness piece. That one's huge. Yeah. To healing our own emotional space before, you know, getting into somebody else's. Yeah. 
Isabella's conversation is so good. And I hope that the mamas listening are feeling like, yes, empowered, because that this conversation lit me up and made me feel empowered. And so that is my hope for our listeners. And I would love for them to hear where they can support you, connect with you. Absolutely. So the easiest way is probably my Instagram, which is Izzy Rodriguez underscore, I-S-S-Y Rodriguez underscore, or you can always send me an email at info at IzzyRodriguez.com. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way, yeah. Perfect. And that will definitely be in the show notes as well for everyone to um, connect with you. And before we go, I would love it if there is something on your heart after having this beautiful conversation about healing, this beautiful conversation about filling your own cup and asking for help, asking for support and empowering yourself to heal. If there is something on your heart after that conversation for this mama that is listening to us right now. Yeah, I, I would just say that the biggest thing that has made most change in my life is investing in myself investing in myself and not feeling guilty for it you know we don't have all the answers we only know what we know that's why it's great to connect with women or men whatever you feel attracted to more to listen to or learn from is investing in yourself with somebody who has walked the road or can help you do that same and also connect with like-minded people you're not alone. And whatever you go through, I, I, I'm pretty sure that somebody else is out there has gone through and you can connect with them, learn from them. It's super important not to just hold everything on, on, on our shoulders, inside of ourselves, but to reach out to be like, hey, I need some support right now. Find your people. Yes, investing in yourself. That was the game changer for me. The moment I started seeking, I started finding, I started healing, and the rest is history. So I'm glad. Exactly. I love that. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Izzy, for being here, for enlightening us, for empowering us, for like literally lighting a fire under our butt to like get to work. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.